Whoa, 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 before we begin, we're running a competition where you can win one of these fantastic pedals for yourself. All the terms and details will be down in the description box below. So check it out, good luck, and enjoy the video. Hello ladies and gents, Jack here from Peach Guitars. Thanks for joining us on another video. First look at some pedals for 2022. The good folks from Gibson have dropped by today and brought us this Maestro board, a rather fetching board in and of itself, it must be said, but the main focus here are the five pedals that lay on top of it. So Maestro is a brand that you will definitely know if you know anything about the history of guitar. Basically this is ground zero for guitar effects. Way back in the 60s, they were probably the most coveted and famous at the time uh, guitar effects pedal manufacturers for their original fuzz tone that Keith Richards used on Satisfaction. Everyone knows about that story. Great, great pedal. And they kind of went on throughout the rest of the 60s and into the 70s making great stuff like the Echoplex. Again, another thing that guitarists will be completely au fait with. Really, really important brand that for whatever reason just kind of drifted away in the course of the 80s and the 90s and the noughties and the 2010s and it seemed that they might go that way for the 2020s as well but Gibson swooped in picked up the brand and they're just pouring every ounce of love and care that they have into kind of reinstating this really important great legacy effects pedal brand which I'm really excited about and I I knew that these were coming I did not know anything about them I did not know what they were going to be and I kind of like it that way because I like to do these videos with you that's basically a first impression. So I have not spent time with these pedals before this video right now. I've plugged it in, obviously made sure everything works, but you're going to come on this journey with me into exploring what each of these five pedals do. So I wanted to kind of uh, incorporate a little bit of everything at the start there. So you'll have heard four pedals on at once. Let me just walk you through each of the five pedals, kind of give you a little bit of a basic uh, background to what they do. The, the important thing to stress with these pedals is that while this is under the Maestro brand, this is a new direction. They're not kind of harking back to their legacy products. They're also not trying to copy anything that other brands do. They're just really kind of building from the ground up. It's a, it's a brand new, fresh start for the brand. And as far as I know, it's very much the start of things to come as well. So this is kind of where it's going to be going in the future. There's going to be other stuff, hopefully, that we see from the Maestro brand in the future. But as of right now, we've got these five pedals. So starting over here on the left, the Discoverer delay, kind of an analog delay. Now, obviously you would maybe expect that they went for the tape echo, echoplex style sound. It's got a little bit of that, but it sounds warmer to me. It sounds more like a traditional analog delay. We'll check it out in a minute to see if it does all the good self oscillating stuff that analog delay should do. Uh, I'm actually gonna leave this on all the time throughout the course of this video and just turn the mix off when I'm not using it, because I'm using this as a buffer for the signal chain today. So that's why if you see the lights on, but no, hear no delay, that's the reason. You've got the Comet Chorus here, which is kind of going, again, for those analog chorus tones. Uh, each of these pedals, you'll notice, has a little uh, dip switch on the top here to give you a couple of different operating modes. All three of the pedals have just three controls on the top. I believe there are some internal 
dip switches and trim pots and stuff like that. We're not gonna worry about any of that stuff today. It's kind of a set and forget kind of approach. Three knobs, one switch, and a bypass switch, and that's all you have to think about. I really like as well, by the way, that all these have top-mounted jacks. It makes it a lot easier to get onto a pedal board. Um, while this board looks great, I kind of wish they made it a little bit more compact, put them all directly next to each other so you could see just how compact these pedals can be, but that's by the by. Comic Chorus, I'm looking forward to playing with that. The Invader Distortion, now this is something, this is like a total juxtaposition here because Maestro, that brand, legacy vintage brand, making a distortion pedal. It's gonna be interesting to delve into what they've decided to do for their distortion. The Ranger Overdrive, uh, you'll have heard a little bit at the start. That's a really nice, smooth kind of, doesn't sound like a tube scream, it sounds more open. If you're familiar with our videos in the past, you'll know I use the Kingtone Duelist a lot. Sounds a little bit like that. It's got that open, ampy kind of quality. Uh, all the pedals gonna be played through the standard Dr. Z Maz today. It's kind of set clean to break up kind of tone with this Gibson uh, 50s Les Paul standard. So nice, you know, kind of bare bones rig. I think these pedals really shine in all of the applications that we're gonna go for today. Last of the bunch is the Fuzz Tone, the FZM is what they're calling it. Again, I don't think it's going for that original Fuzz Tone, uh, you know, the actual pedal called the Fuzz Tone that they made back in the day. I think it's kind of harking back to that a little bit, but with a more modern twist as well. Let's just get into the tones, I think. So I'm gonna start with the delay. I'm gonna go through each pedal in turn so you can hear what it does. And I'm just gonna kind of talk you through my thoughts as we go. Hope you enjoy it. So let's start with the discoverer delay. The mix is off right now so you can hear the dry signal. Sounds like this. <laughs> All right, so before I get into tweaking the settings, it's got, that, it's got that warmth that you want from an analog delay. I also love the way the trails sound on this thing. Just listen one more time. I'm gonna play a staccato chord and you'll hear just, it's got that really nice trail off where the notes sort of start to distort. But when you're playing, it hides behind your guitar tone. It doesn't get in the way too much. That's the beauty of analog delays. They always work well for that. And they've done a great job at kind of capturing that here. Listen to these trails. <laughs> Really, really nice delay, especially for clean tones, but we'll play around with some gain tones as well. So I'm gonna turn the mix down. I'm gonna play around with the delay control, which affects the time, the sustain, which affects the amount of feedback you get, and also this modulation switch. So I'm just gonna kind of twiddle the knobs and play a little bit for you so you can see what they all do.
So it's got the goods. It's got the analog delay thing down to a T. I think it sounds really nice. It doesn't have what some analog delays have where they kind of get too lo-fi. And in I think by trying to be too lo-fi and stay out of the way of the guitar single, sometimes they become too obvious that they're lo-fi. That's got the balance just right where it's not distracting. I'm gonna use it in a more subtle way for the rest of the clips that you're gonna hear. I'm gonna turn the mix down and have it kind of around 11 o'clock on the other controls. So when I'm playing with the distortions and I have a little bit of delay, you'll hear just how well it stays out of the way of the tone. So really nice sounding delay. Turn the mix off for now and move on to this chorus. So this is the one that interests me the most because every manufacturer has a slightly different take on modulation pedals. There is no kind of blanket uh, chorus pedal. You know, everyone kind of knows the boss pedals and fewer people, uh, but still quite a lot of people will know the analog boss chorus pedals. And I think that's kind of a staple. This seems though on the surface straight away to be a little bit of a different thing. So let's just turn it on. I'm gonna set everything at about 12 o'clock. Let's see what it's got. <laughs> Before I tweak any further, I just want to point out that this does what all good analog chorus pedals should do, which is it fattens the tone. So even quite modest uh, depth and mix settings, you know, it's not actually doing much of a chorus effect. But just listen when I turn it off and on again, how thick the guitar tone gets. That's what a good chorus pedal should do. Check this out. Do you know what? You can actually use that as a nice booster because that added quite a bit of level. I turned the mix control all the way up. Depth and speed are very low and it's got a nice fat boost to it. <laughs> nice pitch uh, vibrato to it as well without it kind of getting into seasick territory. I really like that. So you've got this switch here as well that goes between earth mode and orbit mode and I believe this is something to do with kind of replicating the, the Leslie cabinet sensation which is something I really like to do with chorus pedals. So let's see what it does. Keep all the settings the same and I'll just toggle the switch. <laughs>
where it does that very well, I think. I turn the depth up and the speed up as well, obviously, and it kind of cops that faster Leslie kind of thing. And the, you know, the good sign that pedal does this well is if it doesn't interfere with your pitch too much while it's giving you that. So I'll turn it off, play a few chords, and you'll hear what I'm saying about the, the pitch not being interfered with. <laughs> Nice, really good combo these two pedals. So I'm gonna turn the delay back down again. We'll come back to the chorus. I'm gonna kind of <clears throat> set it a little bit more moderately for when we move on to the game pedals. So let's do that now. Invader Distortion. This is the one that I'm most intrigued by, I think, because I don't have any idea what this is gonna be. All the knobs are at 12 o'clock, which is sometimes risky for a distortion pedal, but we're gonna take that risk. So let's check it out. <laughs> Not what I expected. Pretty interesting. So uh, you'll notice this has got a gate on it. So I've t played around with turning the gain up, turning the tone down, and that gate, really effective, really useful as well, because I'm quite loud here uh, in the room. So the Les Paul wanted to take off a little bit then, and the, uh, the pedal stopped it. So quite a cool sounding distortion, very, very big sounding. So it's not one of those kind of overdrive pedals that's trying to be a distortion. This is very much a distortion through and through. It's got loads of saturation to it, really tight and percussive, really punchy. Maybe not the softest sounding pedal ever. Let's try some neck pickup stuff. I'm gonna turn the gate off, turn the delay back on, and let's try and get some fat lead sounds out of it.
but definitely can't be accused of not sounding fat. It's very, very thick. You're either gonna like that or you don't. I personally think that if you're going for a distortion sound, it should sound like a distortion, and that certainly does. So moving away from distortion, let's go into the overdrive category. So you've got this Ranger, great color, by the way. Let me just point out how good these aesthetics are as well. Really clean, really simple, and you'll notice that the LEDs are here in these little bugle uh, icons as well, which I think is a signature kind of maestro touch from back in the day. Really, really cool looking, really nice. It's kind of got, it looks retro, it looks old, looks like something you'd find secondhand in a music shop, one of those cool kind of finds, but at the same time, it's got all the modern feature sets, so that's, they've struck the balance just right. This I played with in the intro, I really liked the sound of it. Like I said, it's a little bit more open than a typical green overdrive pedal, but let's see what it does at 12 o'clock. Straight in, I'll turn it off first, then I'll turn it back on. It's a cool sound, so you, hopefully you can see what I mean about it doesn't have that squashed, compressed thing that a lot of overdrive pedals do. It's got this little low-high switch, which I think refers to the gain level, so let's check that out quickly. <laughs> That's not a tube screamer. That does a hell of a lot more than most overdrive pedals, so I think that's a pretty cool find. You know, it's just, it's nice to see an overdrive pedal that's not specifically referencing something else. It's kind of becoming a little bit more commonplace these days, which is good. It means that these pedals have their own identity a little bit more. So that's the drive, that's the distortion. This is probably the one you've all been waiting for and I've kept it till last, so let's do it. The fuzz tone. All, all things at 12 o'clock, let's just see what it does. I used it way in the intro just as a lead boost and it sounded pretty good for that. So straight into the amp, let's see what it does. <laughs>
Bali. It's got the aggressive raspiness of old school fuzzes, but it's a little bit more controllable as well because you've got a tone control. It's got plenty of level, plenty of output. The attack's got a nice range to it. There's not too much gain that it becomes indistinct. I like that although it's got that raspiness of an old school fuzz, it's got a lot of articulation and clarity to it as well. But if that buzzy thing isn't your isn't your bag, isn't your vibe, then you've got a modern mode as well, which smooths everything out a little bit, makes it more like a kind of more contemporary fuzz. So let's check out the difference between the two. <laughs> I think that's going to stack really well for a nice fat lead sound. So let's let's put the overdrive pedal back in. And I'll put this on top like I did in the intro. pretty well together I think so five pedals there I know this has been a bit longer than we expected perhaps but they're really quite inspiring things to play and I think that's the most important thing to kind of stress here is that even though it's a legacy brand even though it's got a cool heritage to it and even though it's Gibson one of the biggest guitar companies around that's kind of reinstating this they've got to just be good products at the end of the day they've got to be good things to play and that I think they are but what do you think let me know in the comments below what you think of these five brand new Maestro pedals. Like I say, I think there's going to be more to come in the future. So kind of stay tuned to this if you're interested in what they do. But as of right now, I think they've kind of covered all the basics, really. You've got some delay, you've got some modulation, you've got distortion, overdrive, and fuzz. And if you want to find out more information about each of these individual five pedals, then click the link in the description below. Head to our website, peachguitars.com. Everything you could want to know about these will be there. And I think you may just be a little surprised when you see the price tag as well. I certainly was. So there we are, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of first impressions look at these five new pedals. I think they're pretty cool. We're going to film some more stuff with them in the future as well so you can see them and hear them in a little bit more detail. But that's it for today. So if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like down below. As I said before, comment below with your thoughts. Hit subscribe if you're new here. And most importantly, ring the bell so you're notified when we post videos in the future. So thank you very much as always for watching, take care, I'll see you soon. Bye -bye.